Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up, everyone? Matt here. I was in the community. Somebody tagged me in a post. They're asking, what's the most efficient way to move rows from a preview table to a permanent table? Uh, I'll read the first little bit of the summary here. Uh, one of my app's primary functions involves regularly moving, one, moving thousands of rows from one table to another, which involves copy from table A to table B, then delete from table A. While I wouldn't be surprised to learn that this design for my use case is suboptimal to begin with, no, this is a great way to do it, it's the best I've come up with. If you want to know more, read the full story. However, I've implemented However, the way I've implemented it takes really long takes a really long time for the user um, for each individual row addition or deletion. Uh, they seem to be an individual change that needs to be synced from the local app to the server. Is there a more efficient way to move the data? Maybe just change one value in the app to trigger an automation and perform all the data moving server side? Or would that result in the same sync processing time, but just in the other direction? Maybe this is what the AppSheet API is for. Uh, so, the bomb. The, there's lots of really good stuff in there. There's two, two parts that I'm gonna uh, tackle here. First, uh, you mentioned that when you made this change, things changed, uh, that it takes a really long time and each individual, where's that, here it is, each individual row addition or deletion seems to be an individual change that needs to be synced from the local app to the server. Okay, this uh, particular thing that we're talking about right now is, uh, well, I like to call this client side operation. So if you're familiar with um, like web processing, right? You have client side and server side. Server side is all done obviously on the server and the client is done on the device. The same sort of scenario situation applies inside your app sheet app as well. Um, if you execute an action inside the app, that's client side on the device itself, which means that the resources of the device are the thing that's actually doing all of the computing and processing all of this. And that's why sometimes when you do something that like if it's heavy, if there's a lot of formula calculations that have to happen, that's why that can take a long time. That's also why you run into, if you're moving like say a thousand rows from one table to another, that's a thousand actions that were done on your app. And then if you're deleting the original thousand from the first table, that's another 1000 actions that are being executed on your device. So naturally you can see why something like that's gonna take a lot of time, right? Not like just in the, the processing of the actual 2000 edits that need to be done, but then actually, you know, there's 2000 edits that we've gotta to throw to the cloud one at a time and they only go so fast, you know? So yeah, that's, Part number one. So part number two, right? Is there a more is there a more efficient way to move data? Perhaps just change of that one value to trigger an automation to perform all the data moving server side, or would that result in the same sync processing time, but just in the other direction? Um, you're you're on the right trail, right there, right? So will it be will it take longer on the server? Uh, yeah, the sync for that individual action that's processing on the server and doing like all of that, that will take some time. Yeah, because the server's doing a whole bunch of stuff, right? But it takes significantly less time than if I was to try and do that on my device. Because my device is just, it's a, it's just a device, you know what I mean? And maybe I'm doing it like I've got a PC and it's, I've got a crap load of RAM, a really high processor, like it's a beast. It's made for video editing and things. So like it's got a lot of resources. It can handle a lot of processing. My phone is a Pixel 5. It's more or less top of the line. It's pretty close. I think 6 just came out, but it's got a lot of power. If this was an older device and maybe if it was loaded with images and photos, like so it doesn't have a lot of RAM, can't really do a lot of processing, you might crash the app. Um, Okay, client-side, server-side, right? Uh, so the 
the more efficient way to move data between to do like what you're trying to do is move the execution of your like you've got an action that copies from one table to another instead of executing that through the uh through the app <laughs> through the app client side execute that through an automation using a bot uh this the that individual operation right it'll be just okay so in order to make that happen you also touched on it like maybe just change one value in the app to trigger the automation yeah 100 percent. this is like my favorite way to trigger automations just because it's very clear i've got a column that's literally devoted to this i call it automation trigger and like i'll create an automation that's watching that column for the table looking for a specific value so then all i've got to do in order to trigger the automation is put the value inside the column and it runs so this brings me to my suggestion on how you might make this process you're trying to do a bit easier um so just to fill in the blanks for people who are watching the video, but maybe they're not reading, they're, they don't want to take time to go and read the full story down here, which I highly suggest you do. There's a lot of really good information inside here. A lot of learned lessons from this process that you could get from reading this full story. And it's not like it's really that long. <laughs> um, but long story short, not that long. Um, basically he's got a data importing process and the way that it originally worked was it just imported into the raw table. The problem you have with that is people don't always get the data right. Like sometimes there's data errors and if they have an error on like a mission critical column, then that you got other stuff inside the app that are downstream from this using that value and then that value gets corrupted in some way like then everything else breaks in a sense, right? So allowing your users the opportunity to just whoop, upload stuff into the raw table can pose a problem. So the solution that he got from, uh, I'm from TC is to create a importing table, right? So it's an actual separate table where you import into that one. And then that gives you the ability to like check the records are they good uh do they is there you can put formatting rules where if something's supposed to have a value and it doesn't have a value you can like highlight the crap out of it be like yo fix this thing um it's a brilliant idea like i've been doing data importing in my systems and i've never thought about in doing this sort of like two-step thing it's brilliant um and so the the method so that they that the method that the bomb who learn, uh, is implementing here, right, is the user imports their data into this data importing table where it gives them the ability to check things, make sure that it's right, everything's as it should be, and then like confirm, yep, import all of these things, and then they go into the system. Um, so the suggestion that I have for making this whole process easier would be to include another table into the mix that serves as a parent to this preview import table. I'm going to call it import preview. That's what I'm going to call that table from now on, just for reference. So I've got an import preview table where that's where we're actually importing all the records. I want another table that exists as a parent to each of these records that the user is uploading. The, the point being with that one, and it's really simple, like you could just put a date inside there, the date in the email, you know what I mean? You could get, capture any other high level metadata stuff that you would want if you want, but really the whole point of that table is to serve as like a high level grouping for all of the records that are then being added to the system. Because then I can look at that high level grouping record and I'll see all of the related whatevers inside a list right there because they're child records to that first record that we made. Having, the, having everything in that sort of format inside AppSheet makes further data processing a whole lot simpler. So like 
one of the things that they that Devon mentioned down here is having like a confirm import or a discard import, right? So if I have this sort of parent level, high level at the top, that gives me the ability to display to the user that record. So I create a record where I say I'm going to import some stuff, right? And so then we can look at that record and after I import all of my records, I can see them inside this related whatevers, right? And all of the records that I imported are automatically grouped together under that list. So if I want to confirm them, I've got the list right there, all ready to go. If I want to discard, anything that, anything that I need to do with that list is already right there. It also provides me the space on the screen, right? to show you like a confirm, a discard, or whatever type of button up at the top. Because if you were to just display like a table of all of the records that you're importing into the system here, like the, the floating action buttons that you can use on those sorts of tables like that, it's rather restrictive. You can't just put any action that you want in that space. So by having this high level group, this parent record above all of the previews that you're doing, right? That gives, I can look at the detail of this record. And now I've got all the space in the world to show buttons. I've got, uh, since actions are record level dependent in their data, right? I can, can, I can show or not show the confirm button. It, I, I could make, here's another thing. If I can, if I could isolate out rec common errors, I could create a slice. Like say there's a, say there's a column that has to have a value that's supposed to have a value, but sometimes it could be empty. And if it's empty, it's a problem. You need to fix it. Okay. So I could create a slice of these import preview records. That's looking for that column to be empty. And so it holds those records. Then I could create a data subset on that parent level record of all of the import preview records that are inside that error slice. And so that gives me a list of all of the records for the thing that you're importing that have a problem and they need to be fixed. And when I've got a virtual column like that, I can base all of my other functionality, like the presence of the, of the confirm import button on the condition that that error virtual column is empty, right? So as long as the error column that holds the records that have problems, as long as that is empty, show the confirmation. But you see what I mean? Like having that level, having this parent level record above all of the things you're trying to import gives you the ability to have space for all of these kind of functions and interactions that you want to do with the data. Uh, that otherwise you might not be able to actually do, or if you did, you'd have to do it some other way that might be a lot more difficult. Um, but yeah, that's the way that I would do this. And then uh, back to like what, what's actually going on here is you're trying to import the records, right? And so if I've got that parent level, now what I can do is I've got, I could put a column in there, automation trigger, that's just a hidden empty text column. And then that confirmation button just adds a value like confirmed or import or go, you know, engage, whatever you want, um, that it, it puts it into that automation trigger column. And then I've got a bot that's watching that column for whatever trigger word that I've decided on. And when it sees it, first thing it does is it clears the trigger. You gotta reset the system. And then it begins executing that action that copies the row, copies the import preview record to the actual table. It executes that for all of the records inside the related whatever, the child records for the parent group. So it's just like all of this just becomes a whole lot easier to do because I've got this high level grouping with all the child records automatically associated with it. Lots of good stuff inside this post. Like I said, if, you, if you've got the time, go through and read the full story. There is a lot of really good learned lessons. And also, he took the time, the bomb. Great post, man. Fantastic post. You included a whole bunch of these links to other, por uh, to other 
uh, bits so that if you want to find more information, you could get to it. I highly suggest you take the time to dig through this. If you're working on an import system for your AppSheet app, this is going to provide you with a boatload of experience and learning that you won't have to go through. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. I do appreciate it. If you have questions, tag me in the community. See you there.